turn our attention now to the Irish women's national team. Karen Duggan is with us to talk to us about this. Karen, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, I'm very well, thanks. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, where Vera Pau is at the moment in terms of uh, the evolution of the team, the style of play and a culture of winning because that's the bit that's missing. We've, we've certainly heard her philosophy of football be explained over the last couple of seasons um, and they've been close in big games and they've had some errors, individual errors that have cost them the opportunity to qualify for tournaments. But at what point does the uh, the, the pressure start to ratchet up where she needs to start delivering results? Um, I think it has to start straight away once we get into the, the World Cup qualifiers. The Australia game is an interesting one again because they are ranked so um, so highly in the world compared to us. So again, the seven defeats on the bounce have been to teams that are ranked higher than us. So the pressure isn't really mounting in the same way it would say on Stephen Kenny, who's had some bad results to some bad teams. Um, even though the away loss to Ukraine, they were still technically ranked ahead of us. But I thought, um, I don't know if you saw the article Mary Hannigan had in The Independent during the week, but she kind of said the fact that Northern Ireland went and comfortably beat the Ukraine, that that's the, the, the damning thing when you look at the resources that Ireland have in comparison to Northern Ireland. So I thought that was really interesting and a really good point. In terms of her philosophy, she's talked about how the group is developing and developing and that's the word she keeps using and they're at their best that she's seen them um, every campaign, but it still hasn't translated into results. Um, And in order for us to actually start qualifying for these campaigns, we do need to start beating the teams that are ranked ahead of us. Um, So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where we are in terms of her philosophy because we haven't seen evidence of anything that has turned into results yet. There was a real feel-good factor on the pitch around the side a couple of years back where they were starting to get big crowds to the games, results were building momentum, all sort of leading up to that Ukraine game. And we've spoken to so many of the players since then and the devastation of that defeat and missing out on the European Championship, it's almost beyond compare with talking to other players for matches 18 months on still uh, sits so deeply with them, the frustration of it. Is there a confidence building rejob uh, job as well there for Vera Pau? Because it does seem as though a lot of those players are struggling to get over the disappointment of missing out on next summer's finals. Yeah, and that's why I actually think it would have been good if we'd gotten a friendly against a team ranked lower than us to to get a win, to build a bit of momentum going into the World Cup qualifiers. That dev- The fact that we're still talking about the devastation of that shows how deeply it impacted the girls because it was that chance. It was the chance to make history and be the first team that qualified for a major tournament. And they know that they should have done it. Looking at Ukraine, um, they were quite limited when we actually played against them. They didn't actually create that much. And then again, it was shown how poor they were against Northern Ireland, no, not taken away from Northern Ireland, but they played really well. But a team of Northern Ireland stature who are ranked possibly I think maybe 17 places below us again to, for them to win that easily really shows that that should have been the time for them to grasp it and it, it hits harder because it was a European qualification campaign and we're going into a World Cup qualification campaign and we've got Sweden in our group they're ranked second in the world you know they're most likely going to walk their way through it then we've got Finland who are ranked 25th and they're the team we need to be targeting and the fact that we couldn't beat Ukraine who were just a couple of places up below us and um, that might stick in in the girls heads so then you're thinking okay is it realistic for the world cup or do we have to wait until the next european campaign and a lot of those girls again will be be getting older and maybe do we need to look at rebuilding in the same way that men's does so it just threw up a lot of questions and i think that's why it's um so deeply like ingrained in everyone's brain still yeah, so Australia is not what we need to see riding into town tomorrow night. That's the, the There's a strong possibility this team is going to beat us. There is, of course, if they put out their big team. They've got household names um, like Sam Kerr. I think she'll be trying to close in on 50 goals for her country pretty soon. And um, Katie will have, I think, probably three of her Arsenal teammates there as well. They're a very, very strong team. Um but then again, it could have the, the flip effect. Say we play really well against them. Um, say we get back to basics and stop conceding goals. We've obviously um, been conceding a lot of goals to lose seven games on the bounce. So if we get back to basics, and even if it's just a park the bus job and it's not pretty, that's the preparation that they probably do need for the Sweden match. If they get a, can get a result in that first game against Sweden, it blows the World Cup campaign wide open for them. And again, that would be the confidence boost. But like you say, the likelihood is is 
is that it could be a defeat. Um, Australia just off the back of, you know, a really successful Olympic campaign. So they'll be wanting to push on from there as well. So it could be a difficult night, but if they can get it right and they can um, hold off the likes of Sam Kerr and get a positive result, who knows what that could do for them going into the World Cup campaign. We obviously saw the, the big announcement with a... a new sponsor in Sky who obviously are going to invest a significant amount of money in the women's national team and in women's football and there's a hope that that transfers down to the grassroots as well and it's an opportunity for the FAI to talk about the women's game separately from the men's game even the fact that there's going to be a separate shirt I think is going to be important into the future um, you know like we, we, we saw the Mead women's Gaelic football team have the best GAA shirt of the summer there's a possibility there to actually rally people behind the women's team as a separate entity, what's your sense of, of where the team is at the moment and where the the sport is in Ireland at the moment? Um, I think the, the, the talent is there on the team. I just haven't seen it quite click yet. Um, I don't know if that's because there's been a lot of chopping and changing in squads and various trying to find new players and we'll see new players again. We don't really have consistency within the team. Um, we've been changing formation and stuff. So whatever she does in this campaign, or whatever she does against Australia, I'd like to see her translate into the con- the campaign and for us to have an identity within the team because I do think we have the players. Um, in terms of where it is in the country, I think that there's like great participation rates, there's all that, but in terms of really taking the next step and, and building for a successful national team, I'm not sure we're quite there yet. We have the Women's National League but outside of that, we still have big drop-off rates. Um, like in those, I've spoken about it before, maybe the 19 to 23 age group. Um, there needs to be something to kind of plug that gap um, and help girls along who aren't ready to go professional at a very young age. Girls develop at a different time to boys. That needs to be taken account of. And like you say, they have the opportunity now to look at the girls as a separate entity and build it from the ground up. It's a lot easier, I think, for the women's game to catch up to where we want to be than the men's game. Um, I don't think it needs to be a complete overhaul. I think small changes will make a difference more and more home-based sessions. I keep harping on about it, but I think that those development squads are so important. And when you look at Northern Ireland, they have a lot of home-based players, um, but they are together all the time. They know each other really well. And even if it's only four or five of those girls going in with the professionals, that they're not, there's not a big of a gap between them and the professionals when they go into camp and it's easier to gel and it's easier to just work on tactics and an identity within the team there. So I think it's just about more and more training and offering that um, on, on the ground because clubs can only do so much. Um, like I said, they're all voluntary and as soon as long as they're going to say stay amateur and the FAI can't do anything about that, then what they need to do is look at providing other outlets for the girls to train. There's always a lot uh, in every Vera Pau interview, but reading between the lines last week, she doesn't seem totally satisfied with the quality of the Women's League of Ireland and what it's providing for the players in the international setup. She obviously has the international squad playing against men's teams and boys' teams because she feels that is uh, a step forward towards progression and talking about some of the mistakes that were made in the last campaign that came from the home-based players that maybe they weren't used to the pace of the international game compared to those abroad. Look, there's clearly quality there with Katie McCabe was in the WSL team of the season. Denise Sullivan is probably the most talented Irish player there is right now. Is there a big differential in terms of quality within the squad from the very best to maybe player 25, 26, 27 in that squad? I think that that's slightly unfair on the girls who are playing um, League of Ireland, especially because a lot of them are young girls who are getting to the point where they could go professional. Um, I, I don't think the the team as as a whole gelled and the majority of those were professional. So I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't like to hear that comment reappear again because the girls are doing their best. What I would say on that is if she feels that that's not the case and the girls aren't getting enough training, it's not good enough to just say, go and find a boys team to train with. I would like to see her help put those structures in place, put more home-based sessions on. Um, Colin Bell for for all the maybe negative some people had, maybe myself even included in that, he was very dedicated in, to getting um, home-based training and plugging that gap and making sure there was more training. So if you're going to be saying comments like that, I'd really like more help for the girls if she thinks that there is a big gap. I don't feel that because I think our league isn't as far away from maybe WSL2 where we have a good few girls and um, maybe Scotland. 
the only difference is that they are just training more and that's the difference between our league and their league is just that little bit of sharpness that comes from having an extra couple of training sessions a week so that's an, probably an easy fix to to stem that gap and get the girls ready for the step up and I'd yeah. like to see her, her more involved in that if she's going to talk in that way about the Women's National League. Because I think there was a home base session, was there, a couple of weeks back, but it was because they thought at the time they were going to be playing Georgia and the English teams may not release the players, so she might have had to pick a totally home base squad. Yeah, so the, the home base sessions that have taken place this year have tended to coincide when there is a camp and when maybe Vera is in town, you know. Um, it's not been as consistent as it could be. Um, and obviously there's COVID and there's other considerations that come with that but when we do have this investment coming into the game um, some of that has to funnel down into the grassroots development it's not just all for the senior team and if it is for the senior team there's a lot of factors there you do need to to help out within the Irish League I think all the girls who have gone professional have done excellently but we if they want everyone professional you need to help people get there and make sure that they're ready so that they, when they are going abroad they're going and they're starting for their teams because I think that similar to the men's team we had girls who were away who possibly weren't starting for their professional clubs and as much as the training is brilliant you can't beat that match match ship match uh, fitness and the sharpness that comes with that um, and the confidence that comes with that I think even if people did need a confidence boost after some of those results in the last campaign and unless you're playing you can't really get over that and the Ukraine game will stick in your head or the Greece game will stick in your head because that's the last time you've played 90 minutes so um, there's a lot of factors in there yeah that makes a lot of sense more training sessions would, would definitely help Karen good stuff thanks a million for joining us cheers thanks so much it's Karen Duggan giving us some uh, brilliant insight there into the situation as it stands at the moment and that game obviously against Australia tomorrow night